If you've seen my video on my art plans and art goals for 2024, you know that a huge part of that is going to be dedicated to drawing and studying animals. So three quarters of next year's in terms of practice will be dedicated to that, as well as the book, The Animal Gazer, the story of Rembrandt Bugatti, will be also focusing a little bit on that. So today I want to discuss how I'm going to do that and ask for your help as well. I've put together a lot of different references, but I want to hear you all, your favorite animal drawers, any course references that you might like and enjoy. I have shared some of them that I'll mention here in the past and the ones that I will be using, but I would love to know more. So my main reference for this study will be the Weatherly Guide to Drawing Animals by Joe Weatherly. I love this book. I've also bought his art book, uh, Animal Essence. I've read through it. I love his philosophy on animal drawing. There's a little bit of process, gesture, anatomy, and, and so on, as well as going to zoos and getting in touch with the real thing, drawing from movement and how to simplify some things and using your memory as well. So a lot of interesting information that he has distilled both on this book that I'll add links in the description, both for Amazon and Stuart Ning, where I got this beautiful imagery that you've seen, and on his instructional book uh, that we're going to use once again as a basis. So this is the index. I'm going to zoom in so we can take a look at all the information that we have in there. So it's great that he breaks down into like digestible steps. So if you look here, drawing from life and imagination. So the philosophy behind it, going into like places where you can find animals, the observation, use of photographs and video, and why not to focus too much on photographs, the real life, the use of memory drawing as well, going into sketchbooks and materials, both like pencils as well as ink washes that you use a lot throughout the book and get to amazing results, uh, to be honest. Uh, approaches to gesture, action poses, and then the construction part that will have a lot to do with what we discussed in dynamic sketching in the video that I did on the topic. I'll have links in the description if you want to check that out. And the main construction boxes, cylinders, uh, understanding of a little bit of the perspective here and there. He will go deeper into that later on in the book. Putting forms together and getting that volumetric sense for what you're trying to convey in the three-dimensional world. A position, so avoiding symmetry. We discussed symmetry when we were talking about insects before in the dynamic sketching part. There is a lot to be learned from using symmetry, especially if you don't know how to place something three-dimensional in perspective in the flat plane of your piece of paper. But if you want to convey like attitude and expression, it will be great to break that. I have discussed this on the video on the dynamic sketching using Sketchfab as a basis. Uh, and there are a lot of animations there that you can pause in the right moment and also videos that you can pause in the right moment and get a little more of the attitude and also drawing from the moving thing where the gesture will almost come from imagination and then you build on top of that. And last but not least, on this side, it's going to be the part of foreshortening and perspective that has a lot to do with dynamic sketching as well. In a little bit with what discussed on the video on Kim Jung Gi and the structuring, thinking the boxes and placing them, even if in your head, in perspective and putting your object, human, animal, whatever it is, inside that box in perspective, fitting to the overall environment that you have around you that you're trying to convey. And then he jumps into what I'm going to be focusing most of the time, that is anatomy and specific animal drawings. So skeletal structures, the landmarks, muscles, the comparative anatomy. I love this topic, to be honest. I've learned a lot from myself and the world around me and felt even more connected when I started understanding the relationship between our anatomy and animals' anatomies. So their bones, their muscles, and how relatable they actually feel uh, to us. And then, as I said before, a lot of specific examples with 
construction drawings, finished drawings and paintings using ink washes and everything. So this is an amazing book that covers everything. But on top of that, I also want to use a course. And there's a course by Joe Weatherly himself on uh, New Masters Academy that I'm going to be using as a basis for most of the understanding of anatomy specifically. So if we jump into the details here in the syllabus, we have the breakdown in eight weeks. So basically the first anatomy of the horse. And it's interesting that he goes straight into horses. I have like talked a little bit about this before. If you are, and, and FZD has a great video on this, the Just Draw series, where you should focus on something that is a little more disconnected, like a, a rhino or something that you really don't have that big of a visual library and memory of what it looks like, because it's going to be painful to draw something that you look at a lot of times. So horses, large cats, uh, bovine and canine, but Joe Weatherly's approach to this is that they are more available. So it's way harder to study the anatomy of a hyena and find a skeleton in a museum or even a écorché sculpture or something like that so that you can study from. And it's way easier from like this kind of everyday mammals that we are used to getting. So the bovines and, and horses and household pets, uh, large, he mentions large cats in there. Uh, I think it's easier to see uh, anatomy and, and all of that. I haven't gone through the, the course at this moment, but definitely it's easier to have references and to look at real world references of these. Going to zoos will expand that a little bit, but it's something that you should do later on. So herbivore and carnivore comparison for skulls. Uh, as well as like diving deeper into forelimbs, hind limbs, and overall superficial muscles. I'm going to look at a lot of examples in there, but just as a comparison, I wanted to look at CGMA and understand what they teach on their courses. Uh, a lot of people have taught on CGMA as well. So, but if you look at it, it's almost the same uh, structure as well. So basic animal structure, skeleton, Focusing on equine and bovine, canine and feline uh, down here. Once again, skeleton and construction. And then going into fish, birds, and prehistoric animals. So it's really interesting to see this. Even on the prehistoric side, I want to pitch James Gurney's amazing tutorials on his gum road. I'll have a link in the description. They're awesome. Go check that out. I've been studying animals a, a bit here and there for, for the last year or so. So I've, I've drawn a lot of fish, some sharks here and there, some alligators, and then I'll, I'll jump into the reptiles and build from that. I haven't drawn a lot of birds, only when I was traveling uh, a year back. Then I'll move into more complex mammals and all the way to primates where the comparative anatomy will be a big part of that. Uh, so once again, if you haven't started out like through dynamic sketching and doing a little more of the perspective and construction forms, I have a study guide here on the channel, link in the description, as well as looking at the structure that I shared there. Uh, some of them are focused on animals. So starting with observation, as we mentioned before, and getting more complex shapes and construction, in understanding forms, I've talked a lot about this in my using references video. So aquatic animals and getting more organic using lots of cylinders. So a lot of this basis of insects that we've just discussed and so on will be really important. And Foundation has a lot of amazing resources here that I really don't hesitate in recommending uh, when I talk to people about methods of study. So all links are going to be in the description. And let's jump right in and look at some beautiful images. Just a quick reminder as well of where to draw. Uh, I love imaginative realism. I have talked about this a lot. 
In one of the pages, James Gurney suggests going to the Natural History Museum, even to draw from imagination and build on top of what you're looking there. I love this picture of James Gurney himself in a museum. I have uh, been to the Natural History Museum in Sao Paulo, as well as the zoo in Sao Paulo for drawing sessions. These references and videos from Aaron Blaze and Proco are great. I'll add links in the description as well. And this is uh, interesting. I love this photograph. It was taken in the Natural History Museum of LA, Los Angeles. Uh, I love how much gesture you can see in this taxidermy. The way the cubs are playing with the bigger mountain lion is just so realistic and so much care and love for that that I, I really highly recommend you watch some videos. They have amazing videos on taxidermy and the overall process for getting to this kind of results. And if you have the opportunity, go visit this museum. Uh, this picture and this diorama stayed with me to this day. I, I've been there in 2016, so it's been seven years and I'm, I'm still excited to go back and look at this uh, diorama. So week one, it's all about horses. So a lot of references in here, and I'll share this plates in the community tab later on so that you can have all the references here. Joe Weatherly's course and book as a basis once again, but I love a chapter from Terrell Whitlatch's book, uh, on horses, beautiful imagery, uh, her love and passion for this amazing animal is awesome. Also, a course by Aaron Blaze on how to draw horses. This is supposed to be a week, but I'll probably take two or three weeks to go through the, all this content and draw a lot of different horses. I love old Masters drawings, John Singer Sargent, and a lot other ones, Frederick Remington here, as well as different mediums uh, from like pencil and pen drawings, sculpture, Echo Shea by Steve Lord, the use of horses in illustrations by Jamie Jones and Craig Mullins, the sketches and thumbnails of Greg Menches, watercolors by Zbukvich and Karkamo as well as this amazing collection of like horse-like uh, creatures from Ian McKaig for uh, Trojan Horse Was a Unicorn. This is a poster and a lot of the artwork. I have a sketchbook with this image as well that I'll probably use for this specific topic. Week two from the course, and I don't know how long I'll take because it's a very comprehensive topic as well. Uh, is all about large cats. I'm going to use two extra materials here. Aaron Blaze, How to Draw Big Cats, and Tara Whitlash's Workout on Felines from Schoolism. Uh, we can see a lot of references here and as well. You can take your time, pause the video, and look at it. Uh, stylization as well, going from Jaw Cooper all the way to Mute Call and, and, and David Coleman here. More realistic, old masters. Uh, Eugene Delacroix, as well as more recent contemporary oil painters, Greg Beechen, applications in movies such as The Lion King here with Van Kovacs and Ian McKaig. I've talked about this in my video on references as well. So a lot of different sources of inspiration. I'm going to mostly be working from real world reference, both from photographs, videos, as well as from life when I can. Uh, it's harder to, to find. I'll probably uh, ask friends if I can draw their cats. So I'm going to be focusing more on videos uh, on the internet and documentaries to have that kind of movement as well. But these artists are mostly for inspiration. Week three, canine. So once again, Aaron Blaze has amazing courses on drawing animals. I'm adding all of them here. Also, Jonathan Kuo, I think he's still teaching at Brainstorm School, so you can definitely learn from him as well. Uh, Glenn Vupo is teaching at New Masters Academy, so a lot of his videos are in there. 
And I also gathered more references from old masters, such as Sorolla, Sargent, and Rosa Bonheur, or however you pronounce that. I love this Echo Shea by Steve Lord. I really need to study from it. It's going to be awesome. Skulls, so the comparison between herbivore and carnivore, a lot of different references here. I love this drawing by Simon Drapier. Uh, he's an up and coming artist. Here is his Instagram, but it's really inspiring to see what he can do with charcoal. So I added it in there for inspiration. And also there's this video by James Gurney painting in a natural history museum that I'll add a link to the description as well. Then it jumps into more specific. So the forelimb, I tried to find a lot of references of four limbs and hind limbs as well. So you can see it's, it's harder to find specific poses and where you can see a lot of the anatomy and so on. But looking at videos, I'll definitely find more references, but you can go all the way from realistic to the stylization of creature design and so on. This is super awesome by rosa once again last but not least week seven and eight are all about a little bit of a overview of everything uh once again focusing on all the superficial muscles that you can see in the anatomy this is where i'm gonna start adding the creature anatomy course by tara whitlash as well so we got to a point uh, as we're going to start looking at everything once again. I, I want to do it myself. Now I have a little bit of an understanding of anatomy. So going through tarot that will dive really deeper into specific muscles and, and how they look and all of that is going to be great. So this is where I'll go back to fish, reptiles, birds, and so on before getting back to this. So I added some examples here and you can see the syllabus for uh, her course. So lizards and reptiles, a lot of amazing uh, references that we can find. This painting by John Singer Sargent is so beautiful. Love this one by Gonzalo Carcamo as well. Uh, Sydney is another watercolor artist from Brazil as well as more realistic and stylized references from Jonathan Kuo and Mark Davis from the Disney days. Also, this is what is added on Schoolism course. So you can follow along with the syllabus. Everything is on their website and the link's gonna be in the description. Birds, a lot of different sources, going more fine arts with Richard Schmidt, as well as Anatomy by Taro, once again, uh, Avon Melamonson, I've talked about his drawing of birds in a very old video discussing steps and ways to improve your drawing. I'll add that to the description as well. Uh, Gonzalo Carcamo, once again, this is watercolor is just amazing. And uh, Rael here using the, those references and starting to build on top of that, using as inspiration. I've talked about this on my video on references. After birds, we go back to canine, feline, and uh, hoofed animals as well, as you can see here in this structure. Horses, I mean, and uh, other hoofed animal, I'll build on top of that. So I want to add bears. Aaron Blaze has an amazing course uh, on bears as well uh, that you can definitely use as a reference. Tara Whitlatch, Vance Kovacs, this sculpture is just beautiful. A lot of inspiration here, all the way to stylization with David Coleman once again, Greg Beecham. Uh, just awesome to look at this artwork. And I'll share all of this later on in the community tab as well. So hoofed, we can go away from horses as well, uh, more into deers, camels, sheep, and so on. So a lot of great references in there as well. Elephants, I love this topic. You also have courses by Aaron Blaze and Taro, which latched uh, on Nomon School. So a lot of references to uh, get from. Edwin Lord Weeks, even Rembrandt had the opportunity to draw from an elephant. This is not a very 
good story. There's a lot of like animal abuse in that and, and all of that. I might go into that topic later on uh, in another video, but it's interesting to see the connection uh, Rembrandt had with the subject in drawing from life. Uh, Lauro and James Gurney as well as more painterly references and sculpture. This sculpture is in front of the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, uh, done by Manuel Frémier. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. And at this point, we've covered uh, a lot of things. If we go back to schoolism structure, there is the elephant and it goes more into the narrative and complex problems and, and all of that. That's where I want to add Ian McKeg to the whole discussion and his drawing workout to really consolidate everything that we've seen. So just as a quick reminder, we focused on gesture uh, at the beginning, construction, a little bit of dynamic sketching. Then we went all the way into anatomy, dove deeper and deeper into different types of animals. When we got to a point where we have an understanding, we went into schoolism and tarot and her books and courses and diving even deeper into anatomy, now adding birds, reptiles, and all of that to the mix. And now that we have all this understanding, what we're gonna do with that? And part of that is drawing from memory and drawing from observation. This is where Ian McKeg really excels and will bring a lot of those practices to the table in his workout. So you can see some examples. I took screenshots from the, the trailer of the course you can see an insect here, a raven, manta ray over here, also uh, a unicorn in watercolor and the beast that is a connection between like human form, anthropomorphic, as well as the understanding of animal anatomy. So a lot of that. And then we get all the way to primates and closer and closer to the human form. So once again, a lot of different references all the way from realistic to stylization of all of this that we've seen i would love to hear from you in the comments what you enjoy most drawing what are the references that i haven't included here for which topic or for multiple topics P please bring all the references that you have of people that draw paint study sculpt animals i would love to see more and more work uh, it's really inspiring to get to know different artists and get a little bit of their understanding and the beauty that they produce into our work as well. I hope this video was inspiring. It was inspiring to make this material. I'm excited to get to this. I have a lot of vegetation and trees to study from here to starting this uh, later in March but I'm already excited to get there. So thanks for watching. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. I hope you have great studies in 2024 and we'll definitely catch up on other videos. Take care, bye.